Is the C500 Mark II ready for prime time? In today's video, we are going to take a look at 20 different examples where we push the color grade on the 6K RAW that is coming out of the C500 Mark II so that we can find out is it ready to play with the big boys, airy and red. So let's find out. So let me just read the comment that prompted this video. Carlos, okay, the dynamic range of the C500 Mark II, but many new DSLRs have the same excellent dynamic range today. What about the grade capabilities? I don't believe the C500 Mark II can be good as, can be good as, can be as good as, I think is what he meant, can be as good as the true 12-bit color high-end cameras as all Airy, Red, C700, or Sony F55, or Venice. How many stops can you recover in the under overexposed light without having artifacts or color changes or shortage of brilliance in colors? That comment, my friends, is what prompted this video. I wasn't really planning on doing it today, but I think that it is important that I address this because misinformation can get people excited about the wrong things. And I'm going to start by saying, if someone really thinks that an airy camera can perform as well as a Canon cinema camera in low light, that belief can only come from lack of experience and never shooting on an airy camera because airy cameras need a lot of light and something like the Alexa Mini has a limited amount of ISO. But what's worse is that when you decide that you're going to push that ISO above 800, you introduce noise to the image. And I'm not talking about a little bit of noise. I'm talking about the kind of noise that you're going to spend a number of hours cleaning up in post-production. So as a practical example, if you're on set and you're going to be shooting with an Airy Alexa Mini, you also then need to budget for extra lights because that camera needs a lot of light to help you in post-production. And in case you're wondering how hard can you push or lift some of those dark areas and shadows coming out of the Canon RAW light. I'm going to go ahead and put a link up above in the note. Moving on, let's take a look at what it is that we are able to do when we push the color grade on the RAW that comes out of the C500 Mark II. In this first clip, I want to address a couple of other comments. People have mentioned that they can see vertical, as in straight up and down, banding or fixed pattern noise, I believe one guy called it, on the gradient and dark side of my iMac Pro in the shot. And here's what I didn't tell you guys last week. I have vertical blinds on both of these windows. The window that happens to be in front of me, the blinds were not open like the ones in the back. They in fact were tilted so that they could actually cause that harsh light onto my Mac Pro. The issue there is that the sensitivity of the C500 Mark II sensor can see the difference between direct light, reflected light, and bounce light. And we're seeing those different tonalities of luma values that's coming off of what is being reflected from those vertical blinds. It is not an issue with the sensor, and it is not an issue with the camera or the codec or the debayering process. It is, in fact, a difference in light that we are able to see. That level of sensitivity I have never seen before in a Canon cinema camera. I've never seen it in a red camera, and I've never seen it in an airy camera. So it is not the sensor, and I just wanted to make sure I cleaned or cleared that up. Also, if you see it in the gradients on the wall behind me in that scene, it is the exact same issue. So in the first clip, 
we're taking a look at me simply dropping in the Canon provided LUT. And this very much looks exactly like what my eyes saw in that scene on the monitor the day that I actually recorded. It takes the highlights and it brings them way up to the top, right to where you think they might clip, but they don't. And it takes the gradients or the dark areas and brings them all the way to the bottom to, again, right where you think they're going to clip, but it doesn't. So no highlights are clipped and no dark areas or shadows are clipped either. So it retains a lot of information and it gives you a really good sense as to what the C500 Mark II is actually able to capture. While this LUT works and it works well, it's not my favorite. Just to continue to address the comment that inspired this video, we are going to go through and I'm going to show you how pushing the color grade doesn't mean that we cross-contaminate colors. We don't see color shift unless I'm purposely shifting the colors. Skin tones stay on point. The brilliance or that saturation of color also stays on point unless we're looking at the black and white clip. And the contrast can be shifted all over the board to best tell your story or fit your delivery platform. So here's an example of my own color grade, something that I would use if I was going to deliver, say, to cable networks or TV stations. This would be my starting point or what I would call my base color grade. Looks pretty nice. All the colors are what they should be. And all of the contrast and color information across the board and all gradients is there. What do you guys think? Let me know if that's a pleasing image to you or if you think something could be tweaked to make it more neutral and better and ready for broadcast. And now let's start experimenting. Let's try to mimic the look of Fujifilm. For the first example, I'm going to go Fujifilm Retro. And as you can see, across the board, the colors look nice, the contrast is there, and I've shifted the exposure but retained all of that information that the sensor was able to capture. In the next clip, let's once again be inspired by Fujifilm, but this time in a more modern and contemporary approach. This looks a lot closer to the whole broadcast, but it does still give it a different feeling or emotion because of the way that the contrast was shifted and adjusted to get us to this look. Let's take a look at an example inspired by Kodak Film and see how it is that we're able to then manipulate that exposure. And as you can see, pleasing skin tones, which I happen to like from Kodak Film back in the day, as well as the contrast is all there. The color saturation is nice and rich, so it very much looks and feels very warm. And depending on the brand or the product or whatever it is that your project is calling for, that might be a look that you'd like to push towards. For those of you who have purchased my LUT packs in the past, you know that I like the Netflix look and I also like the HBO look. So let's take a look at what happens when we push that high dynamic range scene into one of these two categories. First, we'll start with the HBO look. As you can see, this very much is able to hold a whole lot of information and still keep the colors nice while increasing that contrast in a way that is pleasing. So again, based on whatever story you're trying to tell, that might be an adequate look. Netflix, let's take a look at it. And as you can see, we're able to retain information where we want it. We're able to adjust contrast in highlights, adjust contrast in midtones or in the shadows to better frame up or tell our story. And to get to some of these looks, it took very little effort because of how much data we get out of the Canon C500 Mark II's RAW. So let's move on and take a look at some more stylized looks. So here we're going to start pushing that color grade into areas that are outside of the real world. First, let's take a look at this Latin inspired color grade. And as you can see, everything is there. All the information from the contrast, the color brilliance, and the tonality stays with us across the board. If I push in the opposite direction, we still retain 
all that color information, the contrast is there, the tonality is there, and unless, like I said, we purposely shift color, there aren't any color shifts. And that is really, really important because what it means to me and you is that the camera gives us all the information we need to very clearly and purposefully tell our story in the way that we want to tell it. Moving on to other examples, it doesn't really matter which direction I choose to push the image, the image stays very much intact, it is still very pleasing, and ultimately, it is ready to help you tell your story, that brand to tell their story, or, or for you to pursue your passion project and make sure that your vision is translated onto the screens. So is the Canon C500 ready for prime time? Absolutely. It is, and it will perform exceptionally well, regardless of what situation you throw at it. I'll tell you, for me personally, it's really simple. I deliver content to cable networks, which I mentioned, television stations, which I mentioned, as well as the web. So things like YouTube or Vimeo or content that lives on people's websites so that they can provide training of sorts. It doesn't really matter what situation I can think of based on what I film and what I deliver to that the C500 cannot very easily and quickly outperform my RED, outperform an Airy Alexa Mini with less crew, less gear, less lighting, which really means less budget. And that, my friends, is the main reason why this camera is so important to someone like me who is running a small business. But the best part is I am compromising nothing. I don't compromise in image quality. I don't compromise in color. I don't compromise in contrast. It is all there and available for me to basically summon it any time that I need it. And here's the underlying message that I do not want to get lost in translation. As indie filmmakers, owner operators, content creators, and small business owners, we all want to get excited about the gear that we choose or that we buy or that we can afford. And clearly, I'm excited about the C500 Mark II in case you haven't noticed. But that doesn't mean that we then should either ignore, forget, or pretend like the reality of production life isn't changing. Technology is changing. When I bought my RED, that was the only camera that can do what that RED can do. So technology has evolved. The speed of production has evolved. The amount of time between capture, post-process, and delivery has evolved. And if we don't evolve, we lose. And that's something that everybody should consider and really do a sort of a gut check of where you're at to figure out which piece of gear is going to make the most amount of sense for you. And sometimes we have to make decisions based on money, and I totally get it. But to think that maybe spending 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars on a camera is a better choice. And that something like what Canon did with the C500 Mark II is an inferior choice because it costs less money, that's a mistake. So while some of what I'm saying is in fact opinion and other parts are subjective, like my color grading choices or direction, that is subjective. What I am telling you is that on my screen, as it's in front of me, before it goes up to YouTube and goes through whatever that compression is, I don't see fixed pattern noise. I don't see any color fringing. I don't see chromatic aberration. I don't see lack of color depth. And I don't see any issues with the image that this C500 Mark II is able to capture. So hopefully you found some of this useful and maybe even a little entertaining. 
The whole goal here is really for us all to continue to learn and feed off of each other so that we can all level up. That's what I want out of this community and what most of us in the community are actually doing. We're helping each other grow and we're helping each other by relaying or passing on information. If you have any comments or if you disagree with me, we can still be friends. So make sure that you let me know what you guys think in the comments and I will catch you guys there. Until next time, I'm Carlos with Media on Q, helping you guys compete in today's web economy. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the comments.